Many people have asked me, what is the church going to look like after coronavirus? The honest answer is, we just don't know. I don't believe we're going to go back to life as normal. As we're going to the church, we see pews that are empty. We see the church that is standing um, without being used. We don't know where the future is going to take us. In fact, we don't know how long we're going to be in shutdown. And we definitely don't know whether things will get back to normal. So I want to share with you this morning a few things about what I believe the, the church, and especially St. Andrews, will be facing in the future. I must tell you, I'm not a prophet. This is not some type of prophecy. But just looking at um, different sites, different people, different interactions that uh, I've seen, different people and articles I've read, and I'd like to share that with you this morning. So, if you haven't yet, it's time for coffee. Will you go and get your coffee mug? And then we can sit and chat. I'll give you a moment to do that. And then we'll continue the video. One of the things that we've realized as the church is that life goes on. Church life goes on as well as life around us goes on. When we're uh, shut down, uh, when we're at home, it doesn't stop. Uh, someone said to me, they're going to cancel year 2020. They did nothing in the year 2020, so they're not going to count that. And they won't even have that as a birthday, so they won't get a year older. The church has had many things thrown at it over the years. There's been persecutions and famine. There's been wars. We're just watching a series at the moment during the Second World War and how the church had to step up uh, during the Second World War uh, and change its whole face to meet the challenges of the time. And for you and for me, that's where we are at the moment. This is so different. We might not be at war, but the coronavirus has changed life so radically that we've got to think about the future. The greatest promise that we have and the greatest assurance must be the Lord Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew 16 verse 18 he says this, I tell you the truth that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell itself will not overcome it. What is that really saying to you and to me? Well the Profession of Peter, just in the verse before this, when he says, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, on the gospel, on the truth of who I am, I will build my church. And through the centuries, we've seen things happen and the church has continued. We've seen uh, terrible corruption within the church and the church has carried on. Nothing can stand against the church. And I'm not talking here about St. Andrew's the building. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. That we need to be assured and know that the church, the body of Christ will carry on. Nothing, not even the coronavirus, will stand in the way of the church. But also the members in the church. And that includes you and it includes me. We will overcome this. In 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 to 10, it says this. We are hard pressed on every side. This is the Apostle Paul writing and he's been through incredible hardships. He says we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. What is a wonderful thing that is, that in the corruption, in the, the, the brokenness of the church, and everything that affects us in this world around us, 
of a broken world, of a sick world, of a, a world where viruses can come and upset us. He says, we carry around that corruption because we know that the life that Jesus brought and that is the perfection each one of us will have that in the future. So we can handle what we are, are going through now. And he says this, hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned. See, we have the mind of Christ and all these things can come and, and, they, and they can really affect us. But we know that we can overcome them through Jesus Christ. What's happening to the church, the fact that we have to shut down, the fact that we cannot get back together again, the fact that uh, although we as churches can meet, but because of the virus, we've decided not to. All of those things will pass. And the Lord has his plan for his church. The challenges that we need to face will change our thinking about church. I don't believe that we can go on uh, thinking that the church will just continue. I think that we need to rethink, restructure um, how we do church. The second thing I want to, to talk about this morning is the church will be founded on the foundation that is laid. I've been thinking about this, um, and I don't want to pack myself on the back or our denomination, but our church is based on our motto, thy word above all things. And the church will reap what it sows. If we have a church that is based on, on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible's teaching and, and how we are to uh, continue to live according to the Bible's teaching, that will be taken forward in people's lives. If it's based on personalities and whether you like the music or we do the projecting slides very well, when that's taken away from you, what is left? You don't have Tony up there making a noise. We're not meeting in churches. So if church is all about the gathering, then when we can't gather, then the church will reap what it sows. So if the gathering attracts you, then there'll be nothing left. Remember the story of Joseph in the Bible? Joseph was treated badly by his brothers, sold into slavery. Um, he lands up in Egypt. He uh, lands up in prison. He foretells the dreams of the baker and the, the cupbearer. And then when Pharaoh has his dream, Joseph comes along and says, there's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. And what you need to do, Pharaoh, is you need to prepare for the famine. Now, we didn't have much preparation for this virus. It was within a, a week and we went from... We need to be watching for infection to shut down. But over the last years, we've been sowing. I've been sowing what? I believe at St. Andrews, we've been sowing the scriptures, sowing the Bible, sowing the, uh, the teaching of God's word. It is an important part of our Christian beliefs and our Christian foundation. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 to 20, when Jacob, Joseph's dad, died and the brothers who had sent him into slavery and were now worried because there was no longer the buffer of Jacob uh, in their lives to keep Joseph in tune and Joseph was a very powerful man, they were feared for their lives. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid, I am in the place of God. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. They didn't understand. The brothers didn't understand the depth of what happened with their brother Joseph. They just saw him as the, the prime minister in Egypt who was in charge of all the, all the stores. Joseph's brothers were afraid. But Joseph says, God had a plan. God had a plan right from the beginning that he was going to use me, Joseph said, 
to save people's lives during the famine. And we don't know what the outcome of this will be. We don't know what the final answer will be. But we have laid a foundation that the Lord can build on. It's not how good we are. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. I heard um, someone say the other day that they've got people in their church that although they've got all the technology to uh, be able to um, watch the videos and um, see what's going on online, they just don't. Uh, and they asked them, well, why don't you? He says, because there's no atmosphere, because we feel that it's all alone and we feel that, um, you know, there's not good music and uh, so we don't watch the videos. It just, it just makes us feel down. The question I asked and they couldn't answer was, but aren't they watching the videos so that they can be fed from the Word of God? And... That really was a non-answer. They couldn't answer that one. See, we have prepared our church for famine, I think. And it's not that we did anything different in the beginning, but we just laid a firm foundation. Secondly, we can continue to survive and flourish because we're not based on what happens at St. Andrews. It's about God's word. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to change things around. Um, I want to start Bible studies online. And we're going to chat about that next week, how we can take that one step further. And then lastly, we've stored up enough. Joseph had seven years of planning and preparing. And I think that we've stored up enough. For many of us, it's been lifetimes sitting in churches under the word of God. Don't let it unhinge you. Don't let, don't let it upset your Christian walk. But hang on. Hang on to that. Because God is our solid rock. And that is so true. The foundation of God's word, God's promises, God's faithfulness, God's kindness, God's the truth of God is what is going to hold us through this. What I mean by that is our lives have been so changed. I think about gay and my, my existence. In many ways, we're just as much in lockdown as many others. I go to the shops. I go in, get what I need, get out as soon as I can. Um, because of gay's illness, uh, I make sure that I'm not um, putting myself at any risk. Um, so our plans have changed. Our lives have, have radically changed. And not only that, but our conversations change. You speak to anybody. What is the first thing they talk about? About the coronavirus, about what's happening, about decisions being made, about governments, about the church not meeting, about um, infection rates, death rates. These are the things we're talking about. It's almost as though nothing else matters in, in society. So things have changed. Our relationships have changed. Um, I have not spent this much time with gay in a confined space. Oh, buddy, no, buddy, no. No, I'm only joking. Um, but I haven't spent this much time with gay in a confined space since I've been married. We've, we've always being busy and active and um, now we almost 24 7 stuck together and that changes relationships I thank the Lord well I hope and I thank the Lord that it was a good thing that we have grown closer but we've also spent time in understanding where we are with each other and then ourselves it's interesting as I talk to people, some are over the moon. They revel in, in the quietness, being alone, being, um, it suits their, their personality, the nature of being introverted. One lady who's very introverted said to me, it's now getting too much. I need to go out and do something. And that, 
That's what life is all about. But I've got others. And they are climbing the walls because they feed off being with people. They love people. They want to be with people. They love the noise and activity and all the things that are going on. And they feel that the, the room is just closing in on them. The house is getting too much. They need to get out. You see, some people, it's great for them. Others don't. But, you know, we've got a solid rock of Jesus Christ that no matter what happens in our lives and no matter how constricted we are or, or how scared we are or, or how this impresses on us, that He is a God who is faithful, sovereign. And this virus hasn't caught Him out in any way. He's not been surprised by this virus. His providence stretches from good seasons to bad seasons, from good times to struggles. But God is always there. His plan surpasses anything that we could imagine. Remember that, that passage in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, right at the end? Now unto him, and now unto him who can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, immeasurably more, our faithful God can do more than we could ever understand. Not only that, but he sits in a place of sovereignty and authority. Nothing happens without his permission. Nothing happens out of his permission. He is in control through everything. His presence is always with us. He's promised that. And we know that in everything, he's working out his purposes. That passage in Romans chapter 8 and verse 20. We know that passage so well. I just want to remind you again of that passage. It says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God loves those who he has called, and everything will work out for their good. Everything will work out for their purpose. So as we've spent time together, and we've had coffee, and, and my wife went and baked some crunchies. You, you know, you can't have one, this is mine. But we can think about our God who, who hasn't been caught out. We can think about the plan and the purpose. We can think about just as, as Joseph was not caught out because he had planned, so we've laid a foundation. But I'm sure that Joseph had to think on his feet during the time of the famine as to how he was going to manage the food. And as the leadership at St. Andrews, we've got to think on our feet about how we are going to manage what God has given us, the resources, the church, you as part of the congregation. How are we going to go forward? What are we going to do? And what are we going to look like when everything settles down after this coronavirus? We don't know. But we've got to make some educated guesses and move in, in directions. We don't like change. I don't like change. But I think we'll need to change. We're not, not sure where that's going to take us. But as a leadership, we need to be thinking through that. And we'll be sharing with you as we go along where and what we are planning on doing. So Lord bless you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for enjoying a cup of coffee with me. I'm going to just have a, quiet, a short word of prayer and then we can go. Almighty Father, we thank you for this time that we can come to uh, just share around a cup of coffee. Lord, we thank you that you are our solid rock, that you have a plan for our church, and that nothing, 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 nothing has caught you by surprise. So Lord, let us know that your church will survive, and we want to be part of that church. So as you said to your disciples, the gates of Hades itself will not overcome it. We ask, Lord, that you might give us wisdom in where we see your church going in the future. Bless us at St. Andrews. Bless us as a family. And bless us as a, 
a community together under the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This we pray and ask in his precious name. Amen. Amen.